Hello, everybody. It's Nick from the Commonwealth. We're learning about the past from our community members who experienced it. This time, we're talking with Ronald Noggle, a renowned Nebraskan historian. Ron got his start teaching at a college campus in 1970. Similar to now, there were mass protests across the country at that time. Ron had a windy career path that started in an unexpected place, a carnival. Growing up, Ron's father was an alcoholic with a struggling career. When Ron's father started abusing the kids, his mother stepped in. My, my mother um, was very concerned about things. And um, this carnival came to town and set up on the outskirts of the, of the city. A friend of mine and I walked over, crossed the road to um, see what was going on. And this elderly, uh, elderly woman uh, was having trouble setting up her stand. And she saw us and said, could you help me do this? Her husband had emphysema so bad he could, he did, had one of these old pumps hmm. that he just couldn't do without. And so we said, well, sure. And then she asked if uh, we'd be interested in helping her run the stand that week while they were still there. And um, so um, I went home. And, uh, my mother walked me back over there and said, sure, that's fine. And um, come Friday night, she had packed a suitcase for me. <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> so we closed down about midnight, and I went with them. Um, we lived about 90 miles from Indianapolis, and that was the next spot. And so... We, we were we were right in the slum section of Indianapolis and it was it was and and they had an old streamlined trailer didn't have any other room in it and um, so the arrangement was that um, I would just sleep in the tent on the midway and so for that whole summer uh, that's what I did I, I we closed down the tent I had a a cot underneath one of the counters and spent every night there. Got up the next morning, found the filling station that the restrooms were open so I could wash up. Wow. <laughs> and that was it. You know, it was a hell of a hell of an experience. And then how did it end? Well, <laughs> she, um, the, the woman who owned the stand uh, said that she would pay me half of what I made on my side of the game. Every time I made $100, I took it to the local bank and changed it into a $100 bill. And by the time August rolled around, I had $2,400 in my pocket. And when they dropped me off at home, my father was so damned impressed that he, um, he the whole family spent the winter building carnival stands and going out on the carnival themselves as a family. Hmm. And, um, my mother, my mother, um, is 95 and she just retired from the carnival in 93. One job Ron had at the carnival was running a game that worked similar to roulette. The police or the sheriff's office based more correctly would come around the first night of the carnival and check out the stands. You know, and they would close down the ones that were doing anything illegal. And uh, when when they came around to our stand, which was called a percentage joint, it wasn't illegal. It was it was based on money in and money out. A certain percentage of what we took in, we paid out, and that was it. And and so they still would 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 say, well, it's gambling. And if they closed us down, then we were out of work for a week. Um, and in that case, we had a sideshow that I had a metal cage in and would put on a loincloth, you know, and swing around in, on the bars in there. And people would pay 50 cents to get in to see the, the, the Zulu boy from Zambia or whatever. Mm. <laughs> So that was good money too. Yeah. Wait. So were you the one in the cage, or were you just working? The... Yeah. No, I was the one in the cage. 
While working at the carnival, Ron continued to go to school. He eventually earned a scholarship to Purdue University. At Purdue, Ron fell in love and married his wife. Uh, my wife and I got married, and we spent our honeymoon on the show. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, uh, it was at an American Legion spot, and people were so intrigued that we were students at Purdue University that they would they would come over every night and spend money and then invite us over for beer and um and and food afterwards. So (laughs) it was it was a great summer. Ron explored engineering, culinary and statistics while at Purdue. He eventually landed on history and then went to graduate school at the same college. After graduating with a master's in American history, Ron pursued his PhD at the University of Kansas in 1970. When asked if he witnessed any of the mass protests taking place on college campuses at the time, Ron said, Oh my God, yes. We, we, my wife and I moved to Lawrence, Kansas for the University of Kansas in um, the fall of 1970. It was, it was four weeks after Kent State. Hmm. And the uh, <clears throat> student protesters had set the student union at, at, in Lawrence, the University of Kansas um, student union on fire. And there were three deaths uh, on the front porch of the, uh, the main library. And, and Lawrence, Lawrence was a, um, what, a war zone. The student union was completely closed for the first two years that we were there. They had to rebuild um, so it, yeah, it was, it was a terrible time. Yeah. And, um, as far as like being in the classroom, were there, was there dialogue around it while teaching and like while students were discussing with one another? Well, there were, and there were a number of, um, uh, progressive professors who supported having talk-ins, you know, and getting students together and opening the dialogue opening the discussion um and in fact <clears throat> that happened in part at the university of nebraska while we were in kansas um in which there were there were protests at the um rotc building um that had the the um possibility of, of turning violent um and um in, in fact the uh the governor decided that he he was responsible for this and that uh, he would call in the National Guard like it had happened at Kent State. Well, if he had done that, that would have been a, a complete disaster. I mean, there were how many people killed at Kent State? Mm-hmm. As a history professor, how were you processing that at that time? Oh, well, we were living with it, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. you know, you know. You know, trying to trying to find out the news. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and how would you consume news at that time? All newspapers, basically. Okay. Um, um, mostly television news was worthless. Um, uh, there were there are all kinds of uh, what what would you call it um, theories about what was causing it, you know, and, and um, so forth. And, and what so, were some of the theories on what was causing it? Um, basically, it, it was somewhat the same as today, that racism was becoming a problem. Um, 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 the, the beginnings of the Black Lives Matter came out of that that whole era um, and and is still alive today even more so. After getting his PhD from the University of Kansas, Ron took a job as a history professor at Nebraska Wesleyan. Throughout his tenure, Ron worked on award-winning documentaries and wrote a number of acclaimed books. He even started a quilting history project that has turned into a museum in Lincoln, Nebraska. Ron is currently in extreme isolation due to COVID-19. If you'd like to send him a note, please leave a message in the comment section. We'll compile a list of all of them to send to Ron. Like always, hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button to support our channel. If you text the keyword COMMON to 31996, we will shoot you a text when new episodes drop.